Hello everybody, this is Werner again. Just want to quickly talk about the pop curve force. Uh, if you ever use this in production or played around with it, you would probably know that it is not the nicest tool to work with. Um, particles always tend to fly off or get sucked onto the curve. It's really hard to control and this is something that I wish um, and I will RFE it, but I wish side effects takes a look at and redevelop to, b to get us a better curve force because um, at the moment it's just not working too well. Uh, so just an example, I just have that curve on a grid. I have a pop curve force there and when you hit play, this is kind of what you get. It sucks it into a cylindrical shape just to kind of like overshoot and leave your shape you can increase the radius of that the influence radius to try and keep it in there start to play with with all of these um, ramps to try and control it very cumbersome um, this is a big part of the problem for me is that they always tend to go into sort of like this streaky thin line and even gets worse when you start to introduce some noise to it some nice shapes but there we go there it goes out because my radius is so big there's an overlap so it sucks it into that part very difficult problem to solve um, but if you kind of like you know keep that radius to a point where they don't intersect that much then some somewhere along those lines where they just pass each other it's all good but then your particles fly out a lot easier in all other areas so not the best tool i really really hope side effects redevelops this and get us something better to work with anyway so i thought about this and I came up with something else um, something very quick I th this can be enhanced a lot but um, it's a starting point and I thought I would share if somebody else um, ever played around or had to use the pop curve force uh, maybe this is something to consider and I will um, I will upload the the file to the side effects website uh, to the forums um, maybe it helps somebody else so let me just kind of like show you quickly what I've done here uh, or let's start with what it does and what it looks like so I've got this grid same thing same curve just a duplicate but this seems to work a lot better so you can see the twist um, happening I can control that uh, and quite happy with how this works so let's introduce some noise see what that looks like it's just a normal pop force with some noise and you can see that looks kind of nice all right so how and what did i do basically i just uh, created a sub network here where i just bring in my grid and the same curve so let's pop inside here and then I'll take you through what I've done. To start off with, I created a little line, a simple line. I just did a resample on that and then used the path to form where I bring in that curve. This is just so that I could, um, this resample um, and path to form is just that I can have any curve coming in and it will always work on my line. So if I wanted to do anything on this line, it would just path to form to whatever incoming curve. And I don't have to do anything outside. Um, I can all f fiddle with that curve inside here. All right, so here I just resampled it. Simple, did a uh, orient along curve just to get my vectors, my normal vectors pointing down the tangent of the curve then um, i did create here this is just hidden for now i just created a uv on that curve let me just switch off that uh, so that i could manipulate 
you know running noise along the curve if I wanted to but not necessary or important at this stage right then here I bring in my geometry um, all I did here was just copy the transforms the scale uniform scale from outside copied it onto this relevant relevant reference relative reference and then multiplied by two just to basically scale it that would be my radius around that curve so I can make this any size I want um, I did a remesh on the grid to get more points since I only you know have a, a plain square there uh, and then I did a, a sweep but I set the sweep to columns instead of the rows and columns we normally get and I'm using the, the curve as a backbone so the second input the um, that curve that we generated right so what's nice about the sweep is we have a, a roll function on it so I can twist it um, I can you know do scale stuff in there um, so that's pretty handy so let for now I'm just gonna leave that twist on there so all it basically does is it creates the sweep it basically just sweeps these curves along it then next I created another orient along curve just to get the a new normals for each curve the tangents there and then I converted that normal into velocity just with a multiplier so that I can if we switch on this so that I can control the length of that velocity vector right pretty straightforward um, I did also uh, include a also hidden at the moment but just a point velocity where I basically bring in those uh, normals um, and then added a bit of cool noise if I wanted to break that up even if you know a little bit more if you wanted to then I just rasterize that to a volume and that's pretty much it so now if we look at this uh, oh and then brought that in but in this case I'm using it back by volumes and I just set that to update velocity and now we get our particles flowing along and I also included there a pop force same exact pop force that I had on the previous example but you get a nice little flow much easier co to control and I like the fact that my shape doesn't go into a cylindrical shape um, as a matter of fact uh, I in this case I'm bringing in my original grid that I'm emitting off but I could uh, put a switch in there and I could create a circular you know, cylindrical shape um, or circular shape uh, triangular shape any shape that I really want um, to generate my vector field um, yeah so that is pretty straightforward and simple but it I find that it's just easier to control um, all I need to do now work on next is the ability to you know, plug in multiple curves you know maybe branch off some curves or whatever else here I just have a little bit of an attribute blur set to proximity just to almost create a little bit of a stringy kind of effect all right so that is my custom force or pop curve force um, I hope this helps somebody and go I'm gonna put up a post on the side effects of um, the web forum uh, where I will place this file if somebody wants to play around with it and maybe come up with ideas to in improve it um, but yeah enjoy thank you very much bye